So next phase is pre-EFI initialization phase. And uh, this phase contain um, steps like uh, processor initialization, chipset initialization, and main board, main board specific initialization. And this, this, uh, during this phase, typically there's memory initialization, but we will discuss that maybe uh, in detail on the next slide. What is very important, this phase typically contain uh, proprietary um, IP protected um, stuff that um, most of the silicon vendors consider um, secret. Um, so uh, we can say that PEI is the main subject of uh, a platform initialization specification and the specification defines goals of that phase as a maintaining chain of trust uh, consistent. So when, when uh, we know that SEC initiated the chain of trust uh, as a root of trust component, and then um, PI should maintain that uh, capabilities, that security cap capabilities. Uh, it should perform early initialization, memory initialization, and it should prepare uh, hands of blocks for Dixie phase, and then when passing control uh, to Dixie, also pass those data um, in hops. Um, it, its structure um, is very similar to Dixie, uh, like, but the naming is, is different. There is limitation in the memory and, and um, capabilities in terms of uh, uh, pay modules versus Dixie drivers is, is way different because uh, we, we still we are still yet in a limited environment, um, and uh, what's what's important to understand uh, while talking about um, modern computer initialization, and this was mentioned in other other lectures, is that memory initialization is one one of the most complex parts of the boot process, um, and uh, why is that? So there are many reasons for that. Um, one of the, one of the reasons is that um, uh, memory components getting old and and they may uh, change capabilities over time so that means there is need for retraining a memory to obtain a maximum um, maximum um, performance maximum speed on the buses that's one one thing the other thing is uh, every design is a little bit different every hardware design is a little, little bit different and BIOS have to boot with various devices, uh, various uh, design in, in various designs. Also, the training, the memory controller have to deal with various memory configuration, which vary a lot. And because of that, there is need for some sophisticated algorithm uh, to establish correct signaling and correct timing uh, for for um, memory use. Um, typically, uh, this initialization of memory is provided in binary component delivered by silicon vendor, um, uh, and uh, sometimes even in modern modern uh, platforms, uh, this action of memory initialization is offloaded to dedicated processor, which is closed source peripheral processor, um, which uh, has may have more goals than just. Uh, than just memory initialization, it may also serve some security, um, some security functions. Um, yeah, so silicon vendors uh, consider this code uh, very expensive and, and complex. And this is because when new uh, memory initialization specification coming out, uh, like uh, bodies like uh, JDEC uh, and, and companies which produce memory um, um, memory modules uh, discuss with silicon vendors how this will be initialized, what's the um, what's the best ways, and they of course spend a lot of money on on architects that establish um, uh, those protocols and those algorithms. We may ask ourselves why we even need memory initialization. Um, so we already said that this the modules getting old and the designs are different, but a key point is to achieve maximum bitrate and performance numbers uh, in the uh, in the communication with the memory, so so we can squeeze from our hardware um, um, maximum. How PI structure look like? Um, so PI consists of the following elements. Um, first of all, there was already discussed PI foundation, which is just like general. Um, 
called uh, wrapping the the phase and and kind of scheduling the phase scheduling what is executed in that phase it manages pi execution and and transition to the next phase which is dixie um, it manages um, uh, loading the pi modules which are next component P, P, pims um, those are single purpose interchangeable pieces of initialization code. Those are, we can say that those are very early stage uh, drivers. Um, there are also things like PM to PM interfaces, in short PPIs. They provide communication between modules. To some extent, we can say that PPIs are like protocols or um, like, those are like protocols uh, for discussion between modules. Uh, there is also PI Dispatcher, which is state machine implemented in, in PI Foundation, which iterates over those uh, uh, PI modules and, and run them and make sure that uh, those execute in correct order. Um, there is PI ser uh, per services, which, uh, which is core of some, uh, which is some set of core uh, operations used uh, in a PM, so probably some loading of them or, or um, uh, checking uh, uh, that those execute correctly. There is also a way to uh, express uh, dependency, uh, DEPEX. Um, so the each PI module has set of uh, GUIDs that must be loaded before um, this PI module can be executed. Um, because it used like previously established API. What are the services um, PI provide? Um, so first of all, those are the framework services which are used by foundation, which is loading, installing PPIs, um, appending information to hops uh, or, or appending hops to, to the hops list. Um, and progressing uh, through through boot process and reporting that that state of the of the progress. There are some ACPI related services because um, uh, we have to detect uh, from what state we getting back to life on our platform. Is it cold boot, power on, uh, reboot, just wake up from the sleep, and um, those ACPI function have help to detect that. There, there are functions related to triggering resets. There are firmware volume services, of course, because we have to access uh, next phases and access uh, storage, which is um, uh, which is structured using firmware volumes, as we discussed before. And there are some man memory management services. How handoff between PI to Dixie look like? Um, so first of all, um, the finalization of PEI is described in chapter nine of a platform initialization specification. Um, before Dixie started, um, and there are some crucial things that have to happen. Uh, first of all, we have to find uh, Dixie foundation code. Um, and then uh, all the components needed by Dixie foundation must be loaded into memory. Then we have hob list, which uh, contain crucial, crucial information required by Dixie phase. And, um, and we have to pass that to Dixie Initial Program Loader, IPL, PPI, which is PPI means that this is a PAIM to PAIM interface. So that means we are uh, using still some uh, PAI functionality despite the Dixie name. Um, and then this, this component finally starts Dixie phase and do the transition. Um, and, and, uh, and in theory, we should never get back. Uh, there are some hops required in, in specification. Uh, so Dixie got some requirements which expect, expect some information from previous phase. First of all, is resource descriptor uh, hop, um, which inform about established physical memory. So we, we said that PEI is responsible for memory training, memory initialization. And that's, that's one of the results of that uh, action. Then there is, um, Stack location um, to to um, do whatever is needed to either clean that up, um, either reuse uh, some information which are there, and of course firmware volumes and devices related to the storage of 
uh, of firmware uh, that information is needed by Dixie to continue execution. Um, there are some platform specific hops uh, which given vendors uh, use, uh, but this is not part of the specification. How typical uh, PI module interface look like? Um, so this is a uh, definition of um, uh, PI SMM communication pay, uh, pay, to, uh, pay uh, interface. And, the, and we have entry point for that, uh, which takes uh, some file handler and uh, some um, pointer to PI services. Yeah, so that's, um, yeah, so, so we can see that file handle is meant only to pass to services, uh, which requires type dev void. Um, 